Look at y'all here so early. Hello. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Everybody's just... You're, you're, what it is is that y'all are so excited to hear me do my Instagram spiel, huh? Is that all it is? <laughs> here we go. Let me go to the story part. Let me hit the button that says story. I see soul. Hello. All right. Oh, Herlock Sholmes. Oh, Ria Nosuke. Maybe that'll happen. I don't know. I'm live. Come hang out and see you. Ah! It's beautiful. Is that is that what pe is that why people <laughs> Insta yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A yes. I hope you're all doing so lovely. Um. Okay, here we go. Twitch.tv forward slash. Nope. Forward slash. Woo. Let me add like a little tap. Like a like a click. A click sticker. Yeah, like a little. Yeah. Like we're gonna. You're gonna touch. You're, yeah, this is, you're gonna hit the button, everybody. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. How are you all doing? Hello. Happy when have you all had good weeks? Nor hello. Hello, hello. Oh my goodness. I am excited to play this dang old game. Uh you have a funny meme. What is it? Um because uh, now we're in the new part. I haven't played this part, so I'm just like, huh, what's gonna happen? It's gonna I have to know. I have to know. I, ha I gotta know. And we're right in the middle of a case too. It's all very, um, I'm all, I'm all, I've been thinking about it all week. What I'm trying to say. I'm so excited to find out who done it. Though I think it was, I, well, I have my theories anyway. <laughs> you reach your dono goal for a new outfit. Yo, let's go. <laughs> That's so exciting. Hell yeah. What is the new outfit? Like, what kind of an outfit? Or is it a secret? Should I send it? Uh, I think there's a place in, in the Discord called Videos. Um, my buttons work this time. Grand Zombie, hello. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Boom, 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 boom. Secret for now? Hell yeah. I'm excited. Boom, boom, boom. I'm sure it's gonna be beautiful, wonderful, wonderful. Boom, 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 boom. Um... Oh. Posted it? Hell yeah. Yeah, I'll check it out. I don't I don't do videos on, on stream, but I'll check it out after stream. For sure, for sure. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Burp, 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 burp. Bubba Wallace, good morning. That has to do with Ace Attorney? Okay, that's excellent. I love Ace Attorney. I don't know if you know this, but I love Ace Attorney very much. <laughs> I'm excited for the um what they're calling the Apollo Justice Trilogy, even though <laughs> he's he's in he's a star of one of those games. Um, but um, I haven't played the third game in that trilogy. Um, I, and I ended up buying it on the 3DS before the 3DS store like went away. Um, so I have it on my 3DS, but like how often am I cracking open the 3DS? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> so this will be great. It's Idol and Garu inspired, y'all. Ooh, 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 man! They released another um, Marin Kitagawa figure. Cause they only have a couple figures, and they're all like, they're either like kind of way too cheap looking, or like actually way too expensive. And so I've just been like, <sighs> um, but they released another one that like is kind of in the middle, and I'm tempted. I'm tempted, chat. Hello and welcome. Happy Wednesday. Are you, are you, how Wens are you feeling this day? Jark Spade, I love you. Um, you can't have a glass of milk. I can't have a glass of milk ever. Or I'll, or I'll, or I'll have a bad, a bad stomach. <laughs> um, you shouldn't drink milk just anyway. Milk's not good for you. <laughs> Milk's like actually really bad for you if you're just like drinking milk. Um, like cow milk, dairy milk. It's bad for your bones. We've been lied to our entire lives. They were like, hey, it's good for your bones. That's 27 and a half months? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. 
That's so long. I love it. Man, I remember meeting Sharku on 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 that old clock app. <laughs> You're so new to this chat. I just really like milk. That's that's okay. It's o it's okay to be wrong. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. <laughs> No, I feel like, okay, this is a story. Listen, before we get to the video games part of the stream, which is all of it, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to tell you a story from my childhood. So, when I was a a, a wee babu, a sweet baby boy, um, I don't mean to be wrong. If this is wrong, I don't want to be right. I um they had the commercials where um yeah, I met you before VTubing on your cosplay account. It was crazy. Um uh, uh, I, I, I've always been short. This isn't just a bit for VTubing. I'm very, I'm a very short human being. I'm, I'm, I thought I was 5'1", and then we, like, uh, we measured me, like, at some point in the last year or two. And I, and I, and it, it seemed as though I had, I had shrunk a little bit. So I'm, I'm in between 5 foot and 5 foot 1. I don't really know. But I've always been short. And, um, when I was growing up, they had the milk commercials, it was before the Got Milk campaign, I, th I think. Um, but it was it was Big Milk doing a lobby, and they were like, "Hey, hey, everybody, drink your milk because it's it'll it'll give you good bones, and you will grow up big and strong and tall specifically." So um, I took I was like, "Well, I'm so short, I want to be taller." I don't know how short that is. I don't know how many centimeters that is. Um, I only know inches, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so every day, and this probably isn't actually true, but, um, well, hello, hello. Um, and, uh, I felt like I was drinking a quart of milk a day. And that's probably not true, but that's what it felt like I was drinking. Um, and then every night I was getting stomach aches and my parents didn't understand that I was consuming all this milk. <laughs> And or they didn't, you know, I don't know. They didn't think about the possibility of lactose intolerance. But like for for weeks and weeks, they were like, I was getting sick to my stomach, like really bad every single night. And like I was, you know, I wasn't sleeping well and all this stuff. And so they finally took me to the doctor and the doctor figured out very immediately like, oh, he's just lactose intolerant. <laughs> and they were like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and so I never drank milk again. Not really, but <laughs> but now I don't even like it. I think that the taste of just dairy milk, like if I was to have it as a beverage, disgusting. Um, but maybe that's just my body telling me like, hey, this is going to hurt you. So don't have this. Yeah, almost everybody in this chat is probably taller than me. Bubba wow was <gasps> Bubba wow was um, milk doesn't make you grow. It makes your tummy ache. It makes it makes my it makes my body sad lots of people just drink milk i mean usually it's like with food i mean but like sometimes it's not people just like it i'm loading up the game yeah show it up in the corner three to three of four hard-boiled eggs that's a lot of hard-boiled eggs i don't like hard-boiled eggs my fiance took me to get ice cream and i got some because i didn't want him to feel bad oh no but it oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ice cream, ice cream and milkshakes will also very potentially uh, mess me up. Kudos to y'all. <laughs> yeah, that's well, that's good for you. <laughs> um, I think it's a cultural thing. I drink it with food because you saw your grandpa do. I think the the older generation like they were more into milk consumption. Poison kitty, I like chalky milk. And I'm lactose until I pay for it later. I live in, in California. I mean space. Uh, 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 so we have a lot of um, non-dairy options for anything. There is a, uh, an ice cream place very close to where I live um, that offers a... They have soft serve. Oh, shoot. It's just going. I, I loaded it up and it's just going. Oh, jeez. Okay. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with being barely 411 milk is gross. Let me tell you, Sharku, all that milk did not help me grow. I did not, because I, I drank the milk. I just didn't get any taller. 
I forgot that I'm just very just barely taller than Jarku. Um Yes, if I was okay when I said my stomach got hurt. No. <laughs> oh, that's so tragic. Um but I get the vegan soft serve all the time because it's absolutely bussin' almost almost every time. They change the flavors um weekly and it's bussin'. Alright, so um last we left off. Pyro, hello. Um I'm 5'10, milk and nothing to do with it. It's just all genetics. Your bones will be worse. Um you're like 5'1, we're very close. Um so last we left off, this this couple in the sweaters, one of them's a cop, and they're like, hey, we definitely saw this, and then we were like, hey, your your memories might be bad because we here's an inconsistency, and they were just like, oh, you know. Um so here we go. I gotta get I gotta get into the groove of the voices. Are you ready? Here's the judge. I have considered the defense's counsel's request for a further summation examination of the jury. Can't have anything but vegan ice cream. Typical ingredients make you ill. No! I'm sorry. But I have determined that the court must uphold the defense's judicial right to this procedure. Whoa! Nary nope. Naryuko. Naryuko? One? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Mew Crew. How are you? So, counsel, you will now proceed with your second summation examination. Did the jury, like, did they hate it? I presume the jury is ready, Mr. Foreman. We are, my lord. I gotta remember everyone's voice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> make me sound like a crow. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yo, I love the crows that live outside my place. They're always like, Gah! Very good. In that case, I must yet I must ask each of you now to state clearly and concisely for the court the grounds on which you find the defendant guilty of this crime. Oh yeah, so we gotta like pit him against each other again. Oh ho! I'm doing fine. I love the colors on your model. It makes you squee. Hell yeah! Welcome in. The jurors' contentions. The accused left behind evidence at the scene, didn't he? Those three books is. There was some novel alternative explanation about how the victim was stabbed I might reconsider. Even if the woman was throwing books, it can't be related to this crime if the window was closed, can it? Dearie me, it was only a little book, hardly life-threatening, even with a direct hit. Look, I just want to get this over with. If I don't bring home some pay tonight, I'll be in a tiny bit of trouble. Come to think of it, we had a fire at home a while ago. It gave me the sneezes. The sneezes. <laughs> no, thank you. Hmm, yes, considerably more tangible arguments from all members of the jury this time around, it seems. With one notable exception, of course. <laughs> My learned student friend was unable to find fault in the previous witness testimony. So the court must accept the fact that it was indeed the accused seen fleeing from the scene. And moreover... This man's a vampire if you're new here. No one else was even at the scene to commit the crime. Well, if the eyewitnesses are correct, it would seem as though... It would seem if the conclusion is somewhat set in stone. Where is B? That's a good question. I fail to see how it can be argued any other way. That means, I'm afraid, that during the summation examination... Excuse me. It's essential that we you establish some other tangible explanation for the facts. But how? W what would even constitute a tangible explanation here? Isn't it obvious? Who stabbed the woman and how? Those two details are all you need to provide. Simply give us a name and a method by which the attack was conducted. And there I was thinking this might be hard. <laughs> but Mr. Naruhoto, you have to do it. Otherwise, this will really be where the trial ends. Uh, no pressure then. Bonk! That's quite enough preamble. Proceed with this summation examination, please. I presume you are prepared, counsel? Oh, yes, my lord. All right, Yunosuke, focus your mind now. And your face. Smack, smack. Double smack. Clearly, the, the key to this summation examination is going to be juror number four, the maid. Or should I say, Mrs. Garadeb. We have to book that disappeared... We have a book that disappeared from the Gary Depp's house on the evening of the incident. And the fourth book found in the victim's hand. There must be a way to link the two. Yes, that's what we have to find. Using every technique I've learned in my short career so far, whatever it takes. He's been a lawyer for like three days. 
<laughs> Don't forget to keep an eye on Mr. Gary Deb and how she reacts, even to the things other people say. Oh, I forgot that I can do that. Even with the jurors? He looks so cool when he's standing here, I swear to Gorb. I swear to Garadab. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, press him. Hold it. But as we now know, there were four books, not three. Well, what difference does it make? There's every possibility that the fourth book, in fact, belongs to the defendant's landlord. Yes, but that's the part I have a problem with. Sorry. Well, at the point the woman was stabbed, this landlord fellow was at home, wasn't he? Enjoying a fiery scrap with his wife or something, you said. That's not exactly how I put it, no. And well, anyway, the point is, the fellow and his wife here were somewhere else when it happened. Hmm. I think that's what you call a strong alibi. <laughs> so it couldn't have been the landlord who did it, which only leaves the Nipponese fellow. Honestly, I can't see what the, all the palavers about. It's a done deal, isn't it? I suppose it is, since I've nothing witty left to say. No, Rienosuke, you have you have to solve the crime. There was some other novel alternative about how the victim was stabbed. Hold it! Let me consider. So, you might be willing to change your decision, you mean? Oh my, such delight on your face. But I'm afraid I shan't be swayed by emotion. Despite what you may think of me, I'm a very modern, metropolitan, and rational woman. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> um, whatever, that's fine. If one reads the morning papers, it's all forgotten by tea time, isn't it? So why read them in the first place? You see, modern, metropolitan, and rational thinking, wouldn't you say? And not at all extreme. As I see it, an, overwhelming, an overwhelmingly suspicious Japanese man has been implicated by overwhelmingly strong testimony. So despite one or two minor puzzlements, I do declare that the man is overwhelmingly guilty. Modern metropolitan irrational logic would just I overwhelmingly. Oh, she has so much to say, but us modern gals are always delighted to embrace new fads, you know. So I'd only be too happy to consider an exciting new theory if you could come up with one! I'd be happy to do that too, if only I could. Let's do our very best not to disappoint the modern and metropolitan. I can't I I, I wanna say metro. Politician. <laughs> Neapolitan. The, the Neapolitan young lady. Right. I'm glad you omitted rational there. Alley Cat, hello. How are you? Even if the woman was throwing books, it can't be related to this crime if the window was closed, can it? Hold it! Hold it! But what about the possibility that the window was open? Be a voice actor. Thank you. If, if somebody wants to hire me, I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> what about it? My, my English accent could use, could use some work, though. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, there's no way it could have been. How can you be so sure? The prosecutor fell over there, said it itself, didn't he? Winters in London are no joke. You don't want to invite that sort of cold indoors. So, no, that window wasn't open. Us Londoners like sitting by the fire and staying warm, see? But you couldn't categorically state that the window was open, couldn't you? Uh, what wasn't open, could you? I can't do much better. <laughs> it just wasn't. They would have. They wouldn't have opened it. I'm making animated YouTube series to be the first time to do voice to say thanks. Then what's the point of even having windows, huh? Council, you will kindly refrain from childish bickering. <laughs> oh, um, sorry. Somehow I need to show there's an undeniable possibility the window was open. They probably tried to, I don't know, put out the fire with, like, snow? <laughs> the young man isn't going to budge otherwise. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, a little book. Hold it! Hold it! But the little book was on fire at the time, was it not? With flames of love, I'll have you know. <laughs> There's really no such thing as a loving incendiary bomb. <laughs> well, he brought it upon himself. It's playing with fire to betray a fiery love. Isn't it? Well, don't you agree? Oh, um, well, any kind of betrayal is, is, is certainly a bad thing, yes. But I think the argument might have arisen out of your misunderstanding, Mrs. Garadab. She keeps hitting that guy. Never you mind that. The point is, we were just having a jovial little dispute. Nothing more. Stop hitting him. And I won't have any more of these suggestions that it has anything whatsoever to do with this crime. Right, well, we'll see about that. But what about juror number five? <laughs> he doesn't seem to be turning a hair at Miss Garadab's relentless onslaughts. It's almost as though he's used to it. What a gentle soul he is! What does that mean? They could have opened the window to let the smoke out. They certainly could have done that. 
just want to get this over with. Hold it! You just want to get this over with? How can you sit there and say something like that? The man's future is at stake here. Well, let me and him... Well, 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 him and me both then, like I said before. What? I told you already, I'm a day laborer, aren't I? If I don't bring home some readies with me tonight, you'll find me floating face down in the dames tomorrow morning. What? You heard me, my missus isn't one to mess around, you know. She can be fierce, believe you me. That's why shes he's okay with getting smacked around, I guess? Another shining example of marital bliss, then. Situation like this cropped up the other day. It was, well, um... Do you know you? It, it's funny, but I can't quite remember. Sorry? It was too frightening, that's the thing. I must have blocked it out. Helpful. What is he saying? I wonder if Mr. B will ever be dragged into the Thames by a scarf. I think the Thames is a river or body of water. Ow! Alley cat. How could you? <laughs> Don't even go there, Mrs. Sato. There must be some way to jog his memory about this. Excuse me. Come to think of it, we had a fire at home a while ago. It gave me the sneeze. Hold it! Hold it! Does that have anything to do with your decision about the defendant's culpability in this case? Sorry, what's that? You'll have to speak up, lad. <laughs> Could you tell us more about that fire? It was last winter my grandchildren baked me a lovely cake on my birthday. It had 75 candles on the top, it did. What a sight to behold it was. You put candles on a cake? What, was it some sort of devil worship? <laughs> of course not, it was an angel cake to celebrate my birthday, obviously. They don't do that in Japan. Seems that's a common custom here in Great Britain. A cookie, thank you. Mr. Narhodo. Anyway, I mustered all my puff to blow them out. Only I must have blown something wrong. The flames didn't go out, but candles went flying all over the room. The furniture caught and everything went up. The whole place filled with smoke. Definitely sounds like devil worship to me. And by the sneezes, I presume you mean a cold. But how did you catch a cold from a fire? What a fiasco it was. The grandchildren, bless them, threw water over me as they tried to put out the flames. But then, because the whole room had filled up with smoke, of course, smoke. We had to open all the windows to clear it. The windows? The biting winter air rushed over me like the devil dancing on my grave it did. I caught a terrible cold from it. It put me in the hospital for a while. I won't forget that birthday in a hurry. Knew it was devil worship all along. Something about this old man's story is playing on my mind for some reason. I need to demonstrate who, apart from Mr. Natsume, could have attacked the young woman on the street, as well as how he or she could have done it. Yes, but once again, the juror's statements are full of personal prejudice. A lot of them seem convinced they're right, even in the face of logical arguments to the contrary. Ain't that the truth? I, need to, I'm, I, I think you're gonna need to pit them against each other to force them. I know that, that's how this works. A connection. All right. I need to connect the old man with the other thing. Um. Wait. It was a. Uh... Okay, so we're gonna pit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he changed his statement. Hell yeah, okay. Uh, pit. Objection. Yeah! I didn't catch anything, but he said, but the candle thing, to be fair, yeah. It's a smoke! It's a smoke! These two juror statements clearly contradict one another. They do? How exactly, counsel? No point at me again, I told you it wasn't me. <laughs> mm, what's that you say? Speak up, lad, speak up. Juror number three, do you see? Oh, me? See, see what, sir? Did you hear juror number six's account on his birthday celebrations last year? It seems, despite being a Londoner, he once opened his windows in the middle of winter. Well, yes, of course, because it was an emergency. I mean, obviously, if the room was filled with smoke from a fire, then you'd be mad not to open the... Oh! <laughs> exactly. On the day in question, at the time of the incident, there was a fire in the Garadeb household. And Mr. Garadeb had the following to say about it. The whole place filled with smoke. Oh, my. Oh. Uh, pursue. Excuse me. <laughs> She's drinking tea all fast. Turn number four, do you have something to say about that? You mean I'm weird? 
This is Garadab. How dare me? What is the meaning of this? How dare you imply that I'm hiding who I really am? It's imperative that you confirm something for the court. So please, it's time to drop the pretense now. Wh what is it? When the fire started in the, in the in your house that day, did you or your husband open the window? What? I, I beg your pardon? What are you insinuating? The room would have been thick with smoke after the carpet and bookcase caught fire as they did. In a situation like that, it's inconceivable that you wouldn't have opened the window. And what if we did? Oh, all right then. Yes, you're right. My husband was frantically trying to open the window. Which can't have been easy since I continued to give him a justly deserved book battering. Even though your house was on fire? Oh, you never stop throwing until the anger subsides. It would be terribly bad for the nerves to do otherwise. <laughs> now! Uh, of course, I should have realized. That's a significant step forward, Mr. Naruto. You've managed to establish the window is open! We simply must have that added to Mr. Scaradip's formal statement. Now that you mention it, yes, the window was open at the time. I'd, I'd clean forgotten, but it's true. Um, okay, so now I guess we have to pit them together? So... Objection. Oh, that's well, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Why didn't that work? I interrupted the other one. Ah, jeez. But, but, um, but, um, but. Do I need to press her on this? I don't know. The fourth book found at the scene of the crime shows a very obvious signs of fire damage. And the title of the book, The Lion's Pride, the same title, in fact, as the book that Mr. Garadeb told us he had been reading. Oh! Well, I really couldn't say. <laughs> On the day in question, did you or did you not throw your husband, throw at your husband, the copy of the Lion's Pride that he had been reading? I did. It was the first thing I could lay my hands on, so I hurled it straight at him. And now you come to mention it, yes. He was rather enjoying reading it, you're right. Why did you not reveal this information to the court from the outset? See? Because I couldn't, you insolent little man. I didn't remember. At times like that, you pick up and you throw whatever you can lay your hands on, as you well know. I really don't. I barely noticed I was throwing a book, oh, much boy. less the title of it. Oh, what? What the hell? Excuse me. What's the matter? What is it, juror number five? You you know something? I, I've remembered what it was. That memory I blocked out. Ah, I was listening. I was, was listening to what this granny was saying. Brought it all flooding back, granny. <laughs> Who are you calling a granny, you cheeky devil? I'm Mrs. Garadep or the maid. I'll have you know. <laughs> the man doesn't even flinch. Please tell me that he's not because he's so used to being hit all the time. Ah. It, it was about two weeks ago now. I'd just gotten back home from after work, like. I put my hand in my pocket for the wages I'd just earned that day, and I nearly died. There was a hole! Every last penny had dropped out. Oh dear, what a disaster. You haven't heard the half of it, boy. Oh? My wife was cutting up some chicken at the time. I, I could have hardly get the words out, but I told her straight. I've lost the day's wages, love. Next thing I knew, the blade was whistling past me here. Stuck into the wall next to me, it did. About an inch deep. <laughs> No words, just terror. <laughs> I could smell it then, you know, that god-awful stench of the Thames. I'm sure it was going to end up face down in muddy banks that night, I can tell you. You dig my hair? In- Infinid- Infiniter? Thank you. Hello, how are you? Now that's a real disaster, isn't it? Blocked it out, it was trauma. I'll never use the word lightly again. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this. When women lose their rag, they'll throw anything at you. Knives, hatchets, hammers, you name it. You mustn't think that all women are so short-tempered and unrefined. No, no, I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> Throwing household objects at people is, well, it's uncivilized. At least attack with honor, using a bow or the like. What, attack? Who are you going to attack? <laughs> I 
Never mind. Anyway, this man's words. <laughs> what is happening? Could be rather significant, I think. I think I think that the maid did, I think that Mrs. Garadeb did it by accident. I just jumped when I shrieked, you're welcome. <laughs> Alright, we'll come back to it. Um, okay. Woman in a rage will hurl almost anything at you. Um So let me press this, I guess. Your wife really threw the kitchen knife at you? That's right, she was chopping meat with it. Had a tidy edge on it, believe me. Still, it's all memories, isn't it? It started with that smile she threw at me when we were courting. My teacher asked if I was okay. Oh, no! <laughs> and since then, the list of things she's thrown at me has grown along with our relationship. I nearly choked on this. She says Mr. Naruhoto so often, so I just start yelling it. There was a cup, then a glass, then a pot, a kettle, a chair, a wardrobe, a cooker, a bathtub. Your wife must have been, must be even beefier than you. And things came to a head last week when she threw me right into the tapes. <laughs> Still, she's not so bad when she's calmed down. She's a little sweetheart, really. I'm so happy for you. You want to know what I think? I think this whole idea of ladies first that we're so obsessed with in this country. Was thought up by some clever lads who'd been tossing the dames a few too many times by their wives. <laughs> it's a very interesting theory. What a terrible thought. It was a good sandwich though. It looks, it looks, it's, I love sandwiches. On the face of it, this true statement just sounds like a really extreme anecdote. But I think it might turn out to be an extremely powerful weapon. A weapon I might be able to use to make the jurors accept an alternative explanation. Um, okay. So, a woman in a rage. Yeah, okay, so I think maybe I need to pit. So she says there, there was some novel alternative explanation. But if, if, if she threw a knife out, that's what, that's what I thought happened. Objection. Yeah, here we go, we did it. Those two statements clearly have a deeply significant connection. Guy's equivalent to Arnold, his wife must be Andre the Giant, maybe. <laughs> Good grief, you mean they don't contradict each other? Explain counsel at once. Go back to the comment of the wife throwing the bathtub. She's just a strong lady. Turn number two, do you think perhaps that this could be one such novel alternative? Oh my, whatever do you mean? An alternative explanation as to how the victim was stabbed in the back. What are you talking about? We've demonstrated that the fourth book, The Lion's Pride, what that was found at the scene of the crime, originated in Mr. Garadab's room on the top floor of his house. Therefore, it's equally possible that some other object besides the book could have found its way from the Garadab household to the street below. Eh, what's that now? After all, Mr. G Mrs. Garadab could have thrown any number of different objects at her husband. Well, if her on trial, we're all over here like, mmm, monkey. <laughs> Isn't that right, juror number four? What are you insinuating now, you, you little bean pole? I'm beginning to think that ever since the true origins of this book came to light. Yeah, you do. He have a katana. It's his, just his friend's soul, not his boyfriend. They definitely, definitely weren't dating. Perhaps she's had a feeling this might be what happened. Now, do you listen here, you Eastern Gala? Gala? As a foreman of this jury, I demand a straight answer. You give us this yarn about some other object making its way out of the house, but what? What was it? I'm really taking a big gamble here. That was a bold accusation to make, but I haven't any real evidence to back it up. But I'm certain that at the very least this warrants further investigation. Alright, Mr. Foreman, I'll try to explain the defense's theory. The other object that found its way from the Garadab household to the scene of the crime was... A Kniff. Uh, oh, right. I got confused on which kniff this was. Uh, present. Take that! The, the, the knife from the other case had, like, a, it was ornate, but I, I forgot where it came from. It was a bathtub thrown it at some point to someone. <laughs> Historians, and they were best friends. Nothing more. <laughs> sure, number four. Mrs. Garadab. Whoa, what? What now? I must apologize in advance for this. But I need you to confirm something else for the court. This knife. 
Have you ever seen this knife before? Ah. Lord Council, what on earth are you doing? That's the weapon that was lodged into the victim's back, man! My lord, remember that when the victim was attacked, Mr. and Mrs. Garadab were in the throes of an argument. Mrs. Garadab was hurling anything she could at her husband, who had been backed up against the window, a window that had been opened to clear the smoke, and through which a book sailed to land at the crime scene. You can't seriously believe that. The book was found in the victim's grasp. Are you saying that it flew out of the window and across the street to land neatly in her hand? Huh. Even my missus hasn't got aim like that. Yes, I admit, there are many details we don't know, we don't yet understand. But that's the point. That's precisely why. We must not allow this trial to end. Right, not right now. Oh my. Ah! Mrs. Garadab, your answer, please. Have you seen this knife before or not? Oh, ah! Um. Ah! <laughs> Thud. <laughs> she died. She's dead. <laughs> I wish to change my decision. I'm a woman of my word, after all. Just kissing the homies, no big deal. <laughs> Thank you, madam. Yes, I agree. I certainly didn't see this coming, but... I just don't think it would be right for this trial to come to an end now with so many unanswered questions. Mr. Foreman! I have to agree. Not that I think the granny did it, mind. Yes, you know what? I'm not quite happy about this at this moment either. All together now, ladies and gents. Boo 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 boo! Yay! <laughs> Mean a sandwich. Everybody's got sandwiches. I want a sandwich. We did it! Oh, congratulations, Mr. Naruto! Honk! So, as a result of the defense's summation examination, a number of jurors' leadings have changed. Two jurors call for guilty, four uh, against four now calling innocent. Hands me a sandwich, what kind? Is there milk in it? Accordingly, the opinion of the court is divided. And this trial will continue. Yay, we did it. You have a sandwich, you got crackers, ooh. I like those. Excuse me. Oh, that's... That's, maybe that's a sandwich. No, that's like a bag of rice. <laughs> the worst sandwich I've ever seen. <laughs> now then, Lord Van Zeeks, how does the prosecution wish to proceed? Pour your blood. Pour it. This trial is rapidly descending into a farce. Now what did you like? What do you got? <laughs> I like turkey. I don't really like roast beef sandwiches very much. Like a cork to wine, the first few sips are bitter enough. A rice skull can be a sandwich. Is a hot pocket a sandwich? Discuss. But what follows is so repugnant, it's good for nothing, save the gutter. If I may, Lord Van Zakes, the defense has just put forward a credible alternative to explanation for what happened. Credible? Is that your considered opinion, Mr. Foreman? The defense's argument is a joke to which I barely know how to respond. But let me start by insisting. The hot dog sandwich? I like turkey sandwiches. But you must all familiarize yourselves better with the relative positions of those places being discussed. What do you mean by that? What's his angle this time? It should already be more than apparent that between the crime scene and the Garadeb household runs a rather wide street, Briar Road. We were there. Which means that the distance from the Garadim's household to the scene is some, yes, 15 yards. It's him, Alley Cat! Let me see, 15 yards, it's around 14 meters. 14 meters? Oh, that's a bit farther than I'd imagine. You were there. And as you ladies and gentlemen of the jury rightly noted for having portented significance. Coda, hello, I know he is very handsome, welcome. The fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. How did that happen? In other words, the smoldering book wantonly hurled by the lady of the house traveled some 15 yards to land on the opposite side of the road, neatly between the collapsed victim's fingers and thumb. 
Is that your final conclusion, my learned and deluded friend? More prone to turkey and salami? That sounds but both all. Ah, um, and did the jackknife follow a near identical trajectory, tra trajectory to plunge into the middle of the victim's back? This fantasy is somewhat stretching the notion of having a bad day for the victim, I think. Even those pathetic serialized detective stories have more believable plots. Ah! Bonk. Yeah, but like, but that was the knife. There's nothing you can say, but it got out there. That's the knife. That's their knife, so. That, that prosecutor loves the sound of his own voice. <laughs> English. <-ry. laughs> I like a turkey with like a pepper jack cheese, you know? Sasato, serialized detective stories are pathetic, are they? How dare you! <laughs> She loves the Herlock Sholm stories. Um, let's maybe pick our battles here. My lord, might I be allowed to speak? As judicial assistant, you may speak to the defense. Yes, go ahead. Oh, she angry. Prosecution may consider this the idea of fantasy. But what the defense has postulated was believable enough to persuade the jury to change its leaning. And as such, the court has a duty to explore this alternative explanation as thoroughly as possible. To that end, jury number four, Mrs. Joan Garadem, must be called to testify and submit to cross-examination. Say it's alive! Cross-examination of a juror! I love these, this couple, though. They're very cute. Is it really a sandwich? It really is a sandwich, Jay, but I'm having a chicken sandwich. That's good. Chicken's good. Um, What's your favorite sandwich, everybody? <laughs> But on order, well, this is highly irregular. It is unprecedented for a member of the jury to be summoned to the witness stand. Objection! Stop! So wasteful and unnecessary. Lord Van Zeeks. There are already witnesses in the stand whose testimony the defense may further cross-examine. If my learned friend's farcical theory has any truth in it... Then both a burning book and a jackknife must have th flown through the sky before this couple's eyes. And we must assume they would be able to testify accordingly. Hmm. But it was foggy. What say you witnesses? He's so sleepy. <sighs> Excuse me. Yes, sir, Constable Roy Roly Bate reporting for duty, sir. <laughs> well, good morning, officer. Sorry for dozing in town now, sir. I haven't slept for a month on account of a villain who's appeared on my beat, sir. A villain? Oh, they're so heroic, these London bobbies. Patricia, my darling, I've been neglecting you, but no more. Oh, Roly, my hero, you make me swoon. <laughs> they share a scarf, you see. Very well, I hereby reject the defense's request. And order the witnesses in the stand to testify again. State forthwith before the court any details pertaining to the defense's alternative explanation of events. Yes, sir! Person in crowd gets hit with a bottle of wine. <laughs> it's, it's blood. <laughs> Sloppy turkey sandwich, provolone, mayo, spinach, mustard, pickles on rye bread. Yo, hell yeah. I don't really like rye bread personally, but I understand its appeal. This case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garadap. Believe me, a London Bobby is good for his word. You see, sir? The windows on the top floor of the Garadap household are top hinge casements. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out of the window, we would have seen it. I did leave the scene to go and fetch help, but my trusty Rowley was here to make sure nothing was disturbed. The Bobbies are just like the policemen. The, with, with these big hats, those are Bobbies. Um, I didn't take my eye off the crime scene for one moment, sir. Nothing strange to report on that front, sir. Okay. Well, that sounds pretty conclusive. Well, this is quite startling. Top hinge casement windows. That detail was not found in the police report, Constable. Ah, oh, yes, I'm um, sorry about that. I oh, must have been a little drowsy. Ahem. You cannot excuse your sins with drowsiness every time, Constable. No, sir. Um, sorry, but what exactly is a top-hinge casement window? 
And you... You cannot excuse your ignorance of such trite remarks, my learned friend. <laughs> of course, sorry. Oh, I found it, Mr. Naruhodo. Cast your mind back to the windows in Mr. and Mrs. Garadev's room. All right, I'll try. Mind palace, mind palace, mind palace. So the window opens in order to allow air to circulate inside the house. Ah. Oh. But it's at, but as it's a top hinge casement window, it swings open along an upper edge, you see. I'm glad you've rectified your ignorance. A casement window's most prominent feature is its stay, a metal bar which prevents the window from being opened beyond a certain amount. Apple butter, apple butter's pretty good. It prevents its opening? This is all news to me. Absolutely correct, sir! In other words, if a book or knife would have were to have been thrown through the open window. The winder, the winder. It would have clattered against the pine and fallen straight down to the pipe up below. I miss the thick himbo detective. Oh, he'll be back, probably. No. You see the problem, then. Good, your education in Windows is complete. What about my education in Macintosh? <laughs> there was never any possibility of either the book or the knife traveling 15 yards over the road. Apple butter? It's apple. What do you mean, what's apple butter? It's apple butter. It's butter that they made out of apples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do I have two of these open? Oh, God. Hold on. Is it this one? Is it the other one? Why did I open up? Oh, wait. There we go. Um, hold on. Apple butter. This is this is apple butter. It's that's apple bussin. Is what it is. You just like you just like you just like put it on you put it on stuff. It's got like it's like apples and then you add sugar and stuff to it, you know what I mean? To make it thick, to make it real thick. That's uh apple butter. <laughs> Um, it looks like caramel. It does not taste like caramel, um, at all. <laughs> it tastes like apple butter. It, apple butter isn't as sweet as you'd expect in my experience, but it's not bad. So unless the window pane has been shattered, something we've discounted already. Th that can't be. Be? <laughs> you see that, Rowley? The young Japanese man just collapsed in agony. Oh, yes, my darling, I saw it. I saw how they crumbled before me. Oh, Rowley, you're so strong. <laughs> it's like applesauce, but thick. How is this happening? I haven't even started the cross-examination yet, and already my argument's been destroyed. Counsel, if you could drag yourself upright again, the court awaits your cross-examination. My lord. Oh, good, another desperate situation. Every moment, there's a desperate situation. Tell me everything about it. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> How can you say that for certain? Very good question, sir. And the answer is this. It has the noble founding principles of a force written on it as a reminder to all us policemen to off of us one duty. He showed us that before, didn't he? Did he? I can't say I remember. It was like a week ago. To patrol the streets of London town and uphold the police of the common man, it's what the job's all about. And that's why I can stand here today beside my long-suffering wife and tell you a Bobby's good for his word. While rubbing my tired eyes, admittedly. Sa! Oh, Rowley, you're so manly! <laughs> of course I am, my darling Patricia. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rowley! <laughs> No, none of this is what I meant. I meant, how can you say for certain that this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garadip? Ah, I see, sir. You should have said so earlier, sir. <laughs> yes, well, so could you answer the question? That was a waste of time, then. Absolutely, sir. I will answer to the fullest of my abilities, sir. That's a surprising reason why Mr. and Mrs. Garadip's domestic dispute can't be related to the case. But before I get into that, sir, just one more thing. Yes? I'd very much like you and all your countrymen to understand the great British institution of Scotland Yard. 
So I hope you'll take some time. Wait. So I hope you'll take back some tales of us London bobbies and how we uphold our guiding principles. I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I've only just arrived here. So to that end, sir, I'd be happy to lend you my warrant card for your perusal. But I must warn you, you won't be able to get through without shredding a shedding a few tears. He's tired because the, 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 the bobbies work so hard is what they've set up. Thank you, I'll try. Ooh, I get to look at this. Yo, okay, alright, okay. This is gonna be the Um Let's let's immediately. Uh Principles of policing. Item one, a policeman will strive to preserve the peace within his allotted beat. Item two, a patrolling officer is expected to walk 20 miles around his beat every day for the furtherance of community relations. Item number one, uh, regulations. Any crimes fall under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. Item two, when a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Interesting. Okay, this wasn't exactly... The smoking gun I thought it was gonna be. A butter's cool and I've seen it cheap, but I wish America had vanilla sugar. Vanilla sugar? If you call taco a sandwich, I'll fight you. Fight me. I'm saying it. I'm brave enough to say it. <laughs> Haley Bear, hello, how are you? Okay. Um, okay, well, we'll just keep that in mind, I guess. Alright, the windows on the top floor of the Garadip are top inch casements. Hold it! Hold it! Star, welcome. Hello. Hydrate. Oh God. But which? But but but. Uh, but hold on. Yeah, I've never heard of vanilla sugar as as an item. That sounds busting. By which you mean they don't open fully? Is that correct? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Haley? Yes, sir. They're just there to allow a bit of air through the house, you see. So they're restricted to how much they open. And therefore, anything thrown out of the window from inside the room would simply strike the pane and fall to the street directly below. For clarity, allow me to mark the map. Yes, please. We need map markings. Oh my god. Here is the location where objects would have fallen. Doing fantastic, honestly. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Hell yeah. Hmm, yes, directly. Uh, wait. Yes, directly opposite the scene of the crime, on the other side of the rather wide road. Would it have been so hard for somebody to mention this top hinge casement thing before? But then we couldn't have progressed through the case. Well, I have another question for you, Constable. And what would that be, sir? How did you even know? Why, why would you have any idea what sort of windows Mr. and Mrs. Garadab's house are furnished with? Ah, well, sir. That's very simple. You see, I helped with the investigator <laughs> yesterday. You what? You what? You what, mate? Excuse me. You have something to add, Mrs. Beat? Mm, sorry. You look, well, delighted. Is there some particular reason for that? Oh, I was just remembering. That's all. We really were so lucky. Lucky? What do you mean? Well, of course, I feel terrible for the poor woman who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. But we were just so lucky it didn't happen on Rowley's beat. It was so close, you see. Oh, I hadn't realized. Oh, yes, that street, Briar Road. That's the boundary between Rowley's beat and the next one. Isn't that right, my love? Oh, he's sleeping. He's sleepy. Constable Beat! Oh, yes, that's right. That's the reason I was helping out with the interview in the occupants of the Garadab household yesterday. Their house is on my beat, you see, sir. Hmm, really was cutting it close then. Constable, I wonder if you could clarify something. The Garadab household is on your beat. Does that mean that the pavement next to it is as well? Outside Mr. Garadab's house? Yes, ma'am. Payment of that str the payment on that side of the road is part of my beat. I see. I was unaware of that. Just think, if the women had been attacked just on the other side of Briar Road, we would have never been able to go for that meal to celebrate our wedding anniversary. But that's the life of a bobby, after all. Hmm. Hmm. 
<laughs> That's very interesting. I wonder if they moved the body. I wonder if it happened on the one side of the street, but it then they moved it or something. You know what I mean? Maybe they're maybe they're the criminals. Extraordinary people are poppies, tire work tirelessly working for the benefit of all Londoners. Can I do a quick thing? What is it? Maybe. Do you know what I think? I think it was the good Lord's way of rewarding my Rody for all his hard work. Galaxy, hello. They're all sus. And they were all sus. Don't you think so, my darling? That must be it, Pat, my love. That must be it. I think perhaps we should make sure that we have the information officially on record. Leave it to me, Mr. Narahodo. I'll take care of it immediately. Case file. Payment where the victim was found lies just outside of Constable Beat's Beat, the border of which runs down the middle of Bro. And now it's my turn, I think. A mushroom? Oh, thank you. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out the window, we would have seen it. Hold it! Can I stare ahead? There you go. <laughs> But according to my notes here, the sun had gone down already, and it was dark. Oh, but Rolly and I were strolling along, gazing at the night sky and looking for our lucky star. Sorry. The star that will guide us to eternal happiness. Can it guide you to answer the question? <laughs> if a flaming book had cut across the sky in front of us, it would have lit up like a shooting star. And if I'd seen a shooting star, I would have made a wish upon it. And Rowley be an inspector, I should have said. Three times at least. Of course, with that smog and everything, we couldn't actually see the stars. In short, are you trying to say that neither a book nor a knife crossed the sky before you? I also love the animations in this game are top notch. Yes, sir, that is correct, sir. As sure as the night sky in London is starless, sir. It certainly seems like they're telling the truth. And then we saw the poor woman fall to the ground. And so we ran over to help her. I did leave the scene to go and fetch help, but my trusty Rowley was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. Hold it! Yes, you said that you went to a nearby police box to fetch another officer, is that right? That's right, yes! If it had been Rowley's, or Rowley's beat, I would have known exactly where I was going, of course. Don't feel bad, my love. You can't be expected to know the location of every police box on every beat. So Rowley told me the way. Only, I sort of got a little lost on the way. Patricia, my darling, that's why I love you. Your terrible sense of direction is bewitching to me. <laughs> Twilight Bloom, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Mew crew. How are you? Oh, Pat. Oh, Rowley. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> So I suppose I was gone for about 15 minutes. Well, like I said, my Rowley was at the scene the whole time, making sure nothing was disturbed. I was off duty at the time, of course, but a true Bobby is never really off duty, sir. I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. But, 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 thank you, friends. Didn't take my eye off the crime scene for one moment. Nothing to report, it, sir. Jojo Cat, hello. I am a cat and a boy in that order. Hello. <laughs> Nothing to report. That's correct, sir. I had my eyes wide open the entire time. Never looked away for a second. You're very sleepy. No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. I can swear on that. I can swear to that on the yard's honor, sir. Really, that seems a little strange. Thank you, pardon, sir. Strange, sir. Seems all re altogether regular to me. This burnt copy of the Lion's Pride was originally in the Garadib household. So well, the question remains, how did it find its way into the hand of the victim? Can you shed any light on that, seeing as you were at the scene of the crime the entire time? They're too lovey-dovey. That's their whole deal. Aha! Could it be a different copy, sir? Or just one that happened to be burnt as well? Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping a book like that in her hand? 
As we can see from this photographic print, she had a bag over her shoulder. Well, sir, that book was in the lady's hands from the moment we arrived at the scene. Is that so? There's something about this statement that's not sitting right with me. Those two, the two mysteries of how that knife ended up in her back and how that book ended up in her hand. There must be some common thread between them. Yeah, I think they moved the body. Um, can I ask you something, please, Mr. Lawyer, sir? Oh, um, yes, of course. What is it? You're... You're down us, aren't you? The mystery. <laughs> what? I wasn't really... I mean, what's she doing? Please! Just because I'm a woman, it doesn't make my testimony any less valuable. Man, she's... She's Oshinoko. Look at her. <laughs> With those eyes. <laughs> In a D and D game I was playing, there was a bard with an eye patch, and I rolled for charisma, and I got a 19. So I presided him to move the eye patch to the other eye. Was it gross? I mean, was it yucky? <laughs> you might just see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman of my word. I am. A poor husband. I don't ever really remember suggesting that I doubted you. No excuses. I don't want to hear it. My voice will be heard! My lord, you'll let me speak, won't you? Yes, Mrs. Pete, I will allow you to supplement your testimony if you so desire. Sometimes the path of least resistance is the sage one. <laughs> that was a very loud mutter. I heard that! A Japanese man thinks a policewoman's a policeman's wife's word counts for nothing, does he? <laughs> well watch out, sir! I might let you get away with something like that, but my roly won't! Duly noted, Mrs. Beat. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. Oh, it looks like he's on low power mode. He is. That is what he's doing. What could she possibly be about to say, I wonder? I know what I saw. My eyes never let me down. My sense of direction is a little off sometimes, though. Yeah, so hold on. Uh, I guess I'll press this. I don't know. Mrs. B, nobody is questioning what you've told us. I saw what I did that evening. I saw it clearly. That little Eastern man with the whiskers and the funny curved back slinking away from the scene. News? What is your news, Star? And I know that I didn't what I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books and knives flying through the sky. All very clear. You... You also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction? Yo! Congratulations, Star! Oh my goodness, that's so exciting. You have news also? Is it, is it sandwich based? Oh yes, well, that's a little embarrassing, really. I've always ended up in the wrong place. When I have arrangements to be Roly, he gets ever so cross. Look around. Excuse me. Excuse me. Possible beat, is there a problem? Eh? Um, uh, no, no, sir. No problem at all, sir. Does your wife's remark now just bring something to mind, perhaps? You recovered from a cosplay incident. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad you're recovering. I'm so excited. I can't wait. That's so fun. Oh, my gosh. Oh, um, well, in a way, sir, yes, sir. I, I was just remembering that the same thing happened that evening is all. You mean Mrs. Beat lost her way on the night of the incident? Well, you see, I sent her off to find the police box in the next beat over from mine. But she was gone a fair bit longer than what I was expecting. I thought she'd be back inside ten minutes, but my darling was gone a good fifteen. Oh, Rowley, you're such a tease. Lunala, hello, welcome. Uh, but the reason I was gone so long was because of the bouquet, silly. The bouquet? Sorry, what bouquet are you talking about? Oh, it was a present for our wedding anniversary. Rowley's so romantic. Um, it's like me waiting to be an uncle. Hell yeah! Um, he saved up for it with farthings and hat pennies he found in the gutter while doing his rounds. He's sleepy. Yes, how romantic. I've forgotten all about it until just now. Had you, my darling? I was playing a character with heels and a big ass dress and I kind of tripped. What character? On your tailbone? No, that's the worst. I got dropped on my tailbone as a child by accident and it's, I'm just sort of never been the same. I'm doing great, Lunala. How are you doing? Um. Ah, hmm, uh, oh, yes. 
But that was just between us. Wait. What did she say? Uh, the bouquet? Was the bouquet a secret? You have to promise. Really? Oh! What was that all about? Possible Pete looked very obviously troubled during that exchange. Groomy Tojo. Ooh, hell yeah. That's fun. I'm afraid I can't offer any useful insight, Mr. Naruhoto. But I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Miss Beat about the bouquet. Miss Beat, the bouquet you just mentioned. The bouquet? Bouquet? I don't know. I'd like you to add details about it to your testimony, please. Oh, really? I'd love to. But it's a secret. Uh-oh. What happened was I dropped my bouquet and ended up losing it. I'm losing my way for a while. Hold it! You mean you dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right. Oh, I was so upset. When we ran over and saw it was a woman with a knife in her back. I was so shocked I dropped my the bouquet Rolly gave me. It was in a dark spot where the streetlights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice at first. And then you went to the police box to report it to the policeman whose beat it was on? Yes, and I came back to the scene all together, together with the other constable, you see. Love check, alley cat. I love you. Um. That's when I spotted my bouquet again. But the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, it was nowhere near the victim's body at all. That's uh, pretty suspicious. In case you need reminding, Miss Beat, the victim is not deceased. It was, I was all flustered for a moment before I heard a voice calling me from the other side of the road. No, Rolly did something. Your husband, presumably? That's right, silly me. I'd gone over to the wrong side of the street. He moved it, I'm telling you. Although I'm going to blame the bouquet this time. I can't think of how it got there. I really can't. Well, the bouquet somehow moved from one side of Briar Road to the opposite. No. Mm, curious indeed. Isn't it? But the worst of it is I forgot to pick up the bouquet up. We got to pick the bouquet up again when we left the scene. The beautiful rose Rolly bought me. With that change from the gutter he's been so long to lack in. Oh, he being quiet. By bouquet. Do you perhaps mean... This sorry solitary rose. <laughs> oh! Oh! Yes, yes, that's it! That's the bouquet Rolly bought me for our anniversary with those bits of change he found from the gutter. And watermelon? Yo, hell yeah. Maybe just call it a rose. Tell us, Lord Venzix, where did you come by the flower? According to the report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene investigation, it was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Gerdeb household. I'm telling y'all, y'all, y'all! I'm telling you! Rolly moved the body for some reason! It's not dead. I call it a body also, but... In front of the Gerdeb's household? Although it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. It was believed to be of no relevance to the case since it was found on the opposite side of the thoroughfare. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Could, could I have it back now, please? Hmm. No, I think for good measure the rose should be added to the court record as evidence. Oh. <laughs> what? It's a symbol of our love. I want it back after the trial. Do you hear me? I want it back. The grief. Best rest assured that I shall do my very best not to forget, Mrs. Beat. You can grill watermelon? What the hell? All the water. You just have melon left. I didn't take my eye off the crime scene for one moment, sir. Nothing strange to report on that front, sir. Hold it. I don't remember if we already pressed him on this. Um, I think we did. Can I, uh... Oh, God. No! Okay, so I guess it's at this point that we need to present something. Hopefully we discover Hippo Pilk is pink. What do you? What do you? That was crazy. 
It's pink, you guys. It's not blood. It's not a blood-related pink. Um, okay, okay, okay. What do you make of all this? Is this, uh... I believe I'm starting to get a picture of what really happened here now. The fourth book that had no business being at the scene of the crime made me sure that Mrs. Garadet was hiding something from us. But it's becoming increasingly clear that someone else has been hiding something from us as well. Yeah, Hebel's milk is pink, I'm telling you. Um... I think I may already be armed with everything I need to strike a decisive blow here. This time, it's going to expose the whole truth about this mysterious affair. Um. Okay, so this case has nothing to do with the two of them. The windows on the top floor. Okay, that's fine. If anything had been thrown out the window, we would have seen it. I left the scene to go fetch help. Drop my BK and end up losing my way for a while. I didn't take. I didn't take my. Let's 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 try this. I didn't take my eye off the crime scene for a moment. Sir. What do we got? We got um. Shock of seeing the stabbed victim cause her to drop it where she stood. Um. Pavement where the victim was found lies just outside Constable Beat's Beat, the border of which runs down the middle of Briar Road. Is the true secret behind strawberry milk? No! It isn't. Sorry. The secret of strawberry milk? Listen, get close. I'm gonna tell you the secret of strawberry milk. Are you ready? It's strawberries. Don't tell anyone. That's a secret. Um. Alright, so I think for... I'm gonna save... Because I have a, I have a, a sneaking suspicion that uh, I'm going to get some stuff wrong here in my attempts to try this. This this feels like one of those things where you have to get just the right combination of things, even though I have a picture of kind of what's going on. Um, so... I draw my bouquet and end up losing my way for a while. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's, okay. See, has nothing to do with the carrot. Maybe, maybe this is it. So, let's present, let's try presenting the rose here. Objection. Nope. <laughs> Heck. Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. You milk strawberries. Wicked. <laughs> um. I draw my bouquet. Okay, so I. Let's try this. Let's try... Well... Okay, wait, 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 wait. Maybe, maybe I'm overthinking this. Let's present the rose. These are just the two new things that we have, so... Let's present... Objection. Okay, okay. Alright. <laughs> Boom! You claim, Constable Beat, that there was nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes you were guarding the scene? But that cannot be! What? What do you mean to say? In your testimony just now, Mrs. B, you explained to the court that when you arrived back at the scene of the crime with the policeman assigned to that beat, the bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Objection! Yes, on the opposite side of Briar Road to where the victim was attacked. But considering the size of that meager bouquet, if a single solitary bloom can be so described. No doubt it was blown in the wind across the street, back into the gutter where it belongs. <laughs> Mega! But if that were the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to the fact? No one else 
approached the scene, and nothing was moved from it. Constable Bean swore to that on Scotland Yard's honor. But the bouquet belonged to me. It has nothing to do with the case. That's that's why Rowley didn't mention it, I'm sure. No, because sadly, it is not only the bouquet we're talking about here. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way around. What are you talking about? Think about it. Besides Mr. Be Mrs. Beat's bouquet, there's Mrs. Gar Mr. Garadeb's book. Mr. Garadeb's copy of the Lion's Pride, which was thrown out the window by his wife, would have struck the pane of the, s the casement window and landed here, on the west side of the street. And yet, it was actually found here, on the opposite side of the road, in the victim's hand. Meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, Mrs. Beat's bouquet should have been dropped here at the scene of the crime, on the east side of the street. But in fact, it was actually found here, on the opposite side of the road, in front of Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb's house. There's no logical explanation for those things, unless somebody deliberately moved them! Special strawberry milking gloves. Fun. <laughs> what are you trying to say? The way you're talking, it sounds like you think my Rowley's done something wrong. Don't you listen to a word of that scrawny lawyer says. Wittering on about books and bouquets. Why should we care? It's nitpicking. That's what it is. Oh, good. Mrs. Garadeb's come around. She's not sleeping on the ground anymore. You might call it nitpicking, Mrs. Garadeb. But deliberately meddling with the scene of the crime is a criminal offense. It's called, um... Tampering, Mr. Narhodo. But the person responsible for this tampering cannot admit to it, for a very subtle but compelling reason. Objection! Tampering? You've barely heard the term before. Tell us, my learned friend. Who would possibly have had cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? Yes, there is someone who tampered with the scene of that crime this evening. All the evidence and all the testimony points to that one particular person. Who could it- chat, who could it be? Counsel, I must demand that you substantiate this conjecture. Who are you saying is responsible for the tampering? It was- it was, um, it was Sasada. Uh, <laughs> it was Rolly Beat, Rolly Beat. Um, for sure. Take that! Ah! Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Ah! Constable Rolly Beat, it was you! What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? What nonsense! Why would my Rowley do something like that? There's no one straighter than my husband! No one straighter indeed! Definitely not! You, Narhodo son! No Bobby works more tirelessly for the people of London! Mrs. Beat, you said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. You're making it up! It's all nonsense! It's all lies! Ah! <laughs> what about the Japanese man with the whiskers? I bet it was him. He did it. Protection. If that was true, Constable Beat would have seen him do it. Oh! And forgive me, forgive me for pointing it out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Mrs. Beat, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. Getting knocked out with all that swinging. Ah, oh, well, well. Objection. First, you make the accusations about the landlord and his wife, and now you incriminate a policeman as well. But your accusations lack one very important thing. You claim the crime scene was tampered with, but there is only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime, to hide something. That's right, he's right! My husband and I just happened to be there, that's all! Why would we have anything to hide? It doesn't make sense! You've offered no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. Yeah, he looks like literally Dracula. Shark. Your hair's shiny, what do you mean? Puzzle Beat had a very good reason for wanting to tamper with the scene of the crime. That's the key to this entire affair. Sonar Hodo! Have you. Have you managed to solve this mystery? You solved that mystery, no, 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 no. Counsel, you have made a very serious accusation against a London police officer. If you are mistaken, I'm sure I will not need to point out that your reputation as a lawyer will be irrevocably damaged. 
With that stark warning in mind, you will now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering. Luna Fay, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Yes, my lord. Breathe about it. Constable Beat's motive for tampering with the crime scene was to hide um, where the victim fell. I, I think. Yeah. Because it was on his beat. But he didn't want it to be for some reason. Where the victim fell to the ground. That is what this Bobby had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? You, you mean where she was attacked? What are you talking about? I told you at the very start, didn't we? On the pavement of Briar Road, we saw what happened, remember? He was right here! As if anyone didn't know what he knew. That's certainly what everyone has been led to believe. But in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. What? What? You what? You what, mate? It's me, Patricia. I'm beginning to wonder if this is tumultuous trial will end. <laughs> where this tumultuous trial will end, Counsel. If that's your assertion, then the court is dying to know my Nipponese friend. The <laughs> poor dude. Where are you proposing that the crime actually took place that evening? I mean, like here, like here-ish. Take that! Just around there. But, but that's on the opposite side of the road. Uh, I don't understand. This is the fourth case, Shark, of the first game. On the evening in question, Mr. Scaradev's book fell directly down from the open window above, and your bouquet, Mrs. Beat, never moved at all. What did move was the scene of the crime itself. Yeah, he's Vampire Edgeworth. Good gracious! Objection! Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony the court has heard. But these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. Th that's right! I saw it with my own eyes! It was 5 o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was a, the typical London fog on the ground. When you saw the incident unfold and ran into the victim's aid, that was actually on the west side of Briar Road. No, that's not true. It, it can't be. A, it can't have been. Constable Beat then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you for help. During the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in this print, the victim herself, the four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement on the east side of Briar Road. Extraordinary. But the constable overlooked one thing. What? What did he overlook? The bouquet, I presume. That would make us Van Helsing Phoenix. Yeah. Not no. But yeah. Exactly. The prosecution told the court just a few moments ago about the discovery of the rose bouquet. Lord Van Zeek said it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay where the street lights can't snow light. Yes, it couldn't have been seen in the dark, obviously. Which is why it was the only it was only the bouquet that was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of Briar Road. And that is the defense's theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond? Constable Roly beat. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, well, um, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to nod off again, but I haven't slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything important? <laughs> oh, Rowley! <laughs> it isn't true, is it? What the lawyer said is all lies, isn't it? I know it is, because you're the most upstanding, righteous man I know! I had a dream. A terrible dream. All the things I did that night. Everything come out. Everything... Exposed. <laughs> Fat Six is like, really? <laughs> Only it seems. It wasn't a dream at all. Good. Good golly! <laughs> order, order, order! What on earth is the meaning of all this? Oh, Rowley, why? Why would you do something like this? Moving a corpse is, is a criminal offense, isn't it? It's not, it's not dead. She's not dead. Watching the victim dead should be one too. <laughs> Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? 
As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. Oh, I can't say, sir. What? I really am ever so sorry about all this. For damaging the Yard's reputation. For, for everything. I have a possible explanation. Just waiting for the judge to yell, Good Lord, he, he loves saying good gracious. <laughs> for why on that particular evening... Constable Beat felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? You, you, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. And yet, Lord Van Zeex, this is, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of this matter thus far. I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's testimony. Counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord. Now then, I think you had better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. I'll show you the evidence. England, Japan, it makes no difference where you come from. Human emotions are the same. And I think I have a fairly good idea of the feelings behind this man's actions. Gives away the motive for Constable Beat's unthinkable actions. I think it's the, um... I think it's this. Um... Because he's a sleepy boy. Any crimes fall under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. Crime is discovered on speed. A policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. I think they were on the way to dinner. And he didn't want to deal with this. He wanted to take his wife out. So he just moved it to a place that wasn't his beat. So that he wouldn't have to deal with it. You know what I mean? It's not a... It's not that malicious, probably. We're going to present this. I think that's got to be it. I realize that I'm a foreigner in this land, and I have only just arrived from Japan. Which is why all this information about London's so-called Bobbies is completely new to me. I've learned that, though, through honorable patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world. For example... Keeping the peace, looking after the citizens on his beat in all kinds of ways. There's no doubt that this young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for Constable Beat, that day in question was special. Special? How? On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh, yes, it was our very first wedding anniversary. Oh, Vizix gets it. Constable Beat had worked so hard to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife. And was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal. When he and Mrs. Beat stumbled upon a crime along Briar Road. When he saw that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them, what must have gone through the man's mind? But sir, just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mrs. B puts up with a lot being married to a bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. I feel like Van Zeeks is probably not a bad dude. I think, like, we're being set up to assume that he's, like, a murderer <laughs> outside of court. But that's not actually true. But I don't know. I'm curious. This is the warrant card that Constable Beat offered to lend me earlier. Inside, among the rules for patrolling policemen, it says, When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Aha! Uh -huh. I feel like he owns a dog named Sprinkles, maybe. Constable Beat. Is that, or is that not, the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said... It's all right. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Oh! Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. Gracious! Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you've done? It, it was the first time since I became a copper that I never cursed God. Stay close to me, Pat. The criminal should still be lurking somewhere. Bonsai. He's very firm. He insults. But not like who? But not like what? Crimson! Alright, let me read this. Hold on. Crimson, hello. Do you guys know that bakers trade their recipes on a, oh, a need-to-know basis? <laughs> <laughs> hello, Crimson, welcome. As we ran over to the as, as we ran over to the scene, I had every intention to do in my duty as a police officer. 
Wait, which, 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 ooh, wait, hold on. Which game is Spirit of Ju is that the one, is that the, that might be the one I didn't play, I don't remember. There's one mainline game I haven't played yet, um, and it's the sixth one, I guess, it's the latest one. Um, but I don't remember which is which. I played, I played Apollo Justice and the one that came after that, but not the third one. The one where, like, Maya comes back, I guess. I haven't played that one. <laughs> We've got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was lying, and what that meant for me. Oh, with a resub! 20 months! Oh, wow. Hello, thank you. For a second there, you thought I was going to deez nuts you. I, I, I was. <laughs> I did. <laughs> um. Ah! <laughs> Hydrate. You got it. Oh, my gosh. Um. I know what that meant for me. When a crime is discovered on speed, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Why here? Why did this have to happen here? And why tonight of all nights? Why? Why? <laughs> it's a copper's job to guard the scene of the crime, so I told Pat she'd have to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then when I opened my mouth to speak. It just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth. This is the next beat to mine, Pat. So you have to get the police box that covers it. Turn right along Mearsham Street and then... Ow! Oh. oh no! Um, um. He's crying. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, Constable. Oh, I just wanted just that one night to take my Patricia out for dinner. Oh, Rowley. Just that one night. He got caught. You knew that the incident was on your beat. Your evening of celebration would be ruined. So you decided to move the entire crime scene outside your jurisdiction. Just across the street to the East Pavement of Briar Road, which falls under the neighboring Beats care. Excuse me. You see, I thought, I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. I beg your pardon? Oh, of course he did. Otherwise, my Rolly would have never left the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement. Ah, I see your meaning now. God got me back for my sins, didn't he? That's why. That's why I missed the rose I bought for Pat. Oh no, Rowley, that, that was my fault. I should have never dropped it in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Rowley. <laughs> Can you tell us, Constable? How many books did you move from one side of the road to the other in total? Hmm? Oh, um, four it was. Yes, sir, definitely four. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsume, and the fourth being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Garadab household, of course. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all the others were scattered haphazardly around, I mean. Oh, well, sir, that's because that's how I found it. Oh, you found it? What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. 56. You're, you're sure it was this book's Alliance Pride that the victim was holding? Oh, yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Hmm, interesting. Fourth book's information. 56 books. I thought it was an open and shut case at the time, you see. There were only two people at the scene, and Pat and me both saw it happen. Good British, thank you. I'm working on it. It's 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 just okay, for <laughs> in my opinion. Um, but I'm doing my best. I appreciate you. However way you, however which way you looked at it, it had to be the fella who ran off and done it. I thought. I couldn't see the arm really. I didn't think moving it over the road would have made a jot of difference. Uh, I suppose this is it for me now. I've had it. My lord. Yes, Lord Van Deeks. I believe. That concludes the cross-examination of the witnesses.
Constable, you may withdraw. Yes, sir! Um, Mr. Prosecutor, sir? What will become of my Rowley? What will happen of him? For now, you are free to go home. The police will contact you in due course. Please, don't punish my husband. This was my fault. It's because I'm always moaning at him for coming home late. <laughs> Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. Yeah. No truer words have ever been said. All right, then, my love. One last thing, Constable. Sir? Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant it may seem to you. Yes, sir. Carve that lesson into your mind. He doesn't seem like a bad guy, you know what I mean? And never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of a crime. Ah! Never again, sir! Y you mean to say... Leave, now. This trial is not yet over. Ah, um... Sir! <laughs> He just seems like, it's, it's, it feels very Miles Edgeworthy, you know? It's like, Miles Edgeworth isn't a bad guy, but maybe he'd be doing some bad stuff. Maybe. Well, quite a startling revelation, I must say. Whoever thought of a third party transplanting the entire scene of a crime like that? Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable facts here, principally. That the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume, is the only person who could have possibly have committed this crime. Attention. No, I disagree. Now that we know the true scene of the incident, there is someone else. Another person who could be responsible for the knife in the victim's back. Forgive me for being presumptuous, but I believe the prosecution is probably well aware of the possibility already. Lord Van Zeeks, this is true. Very well. Name the person if you will, and if further investigation is warranted... The prosecution has no objection to the trial continuing. Bonk. I will name this other person. Who could it be? Oh my god, it's her. The defense would once again like to request a cross-examination of a new witness, my lord. Once again? My assistant made the same request earlier. In order to finally reveal the truth about this case... It's imperative that we cross-examine juror number four, Mrs. Joan Garadeb. Me? Me? Oh, dearie me! Objection! What do you mean? That request has already been denied. Objection! But the situation is very different now. Mrs. Garadeb, answer me this. What do you want now, you little toad? At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. John Garadet. In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited, and to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened a window that looks over, out over Briar Road. Yes, well, what of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane of open, top-hinged casement window, the book, <laughs> the book plummeted directly down. J-Mama, hello. I'm doing great. What kind of errands? Were they fun? Did you get to go to Costco? Eat a, eat a, eat a sample? Finding its way to what we now know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, and as I said, what of it? During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Garadev. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back... Doctor appointments, aw, oh, man. Have you ever, have you really never laid eyes on it before? Oh! I don't recall it. Seriously? Am I supposed to remember everything I picked up and threw at my husband? And anyway, the man over there and all that regalia said members of the jury needn't testify, did he? Conveniently, yes. Objection! No, I have no recollection of saying that at all, juror number four. Oh! Make no mistake. You jurors are not special in any way. You are not immune to the judicial process. 
If you know something about this knife, madam, let the truth come out. Yeah, see, this is what we're talking about. Like, he's not a bad dude. But, but that's just a common or garden knife. Common or garden. That's what they called it before. I guess that's... I guess they didn't have, like, pocket knife back then. Common or garden knife. It could have come with it. They said that before. It could have come from anywhere. Oh, we have several like that at home. If, if one went missing, how would you expect me to know? What's that? Are you joking? What are you saying? Please, Mrs. Garrett. Now, you listen to me. I, I refuse to believe all this nonsense. I couldn't bear the thought that I'd injured someone. Do you hear? I couldn't bear it. Oh, the poor woman. So, yes, I want evidence. I want to see hard evidence if you're going to insist on this being my fault. You're going to have to prove it to me that I threw that knife, if that's what you think. Come along now, chop chop! Do your worst. Um, well. Well, Mr. Naruto! Mr. Naruto! If I had evidence like that, believe me, I would have thrown it at her already. Just like she threw that knife into the guy's back. <laughs> then take the stand, juror. Oh! The prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Van Zeeks. I, I'm going to have to testify? <laughs> Bird number four. So I'm sure you will appreciate having observed it with your own eyes today. JJ, hello. Good to see you. Witness testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truth being unearthed. Truths of which the witnesses themselves might not even have been aware. Oh, dearie me. So I demand your full and unadulterated testimony, Mrs. Garadet. And mark my words, in this court of law today, we shall extract the truth. Do you concur, counsels? Certainly, my lord. Oh, um, that's what I'm hoping for, my lord. Yeah, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. This is such a strange feeling. The first time since arriving in this country, it actually feels real. I'm here, in the old Bailey, and I'm a lawyer. Yeah, bud. No, I'm proud of you, too. So say we all. Witness, state your name and occupation. Oh, um, yes, my name is Joan Garrida. And I'm, um, well, I'm a juror and such like. It sounds like she doesn't even know if she's a housewife or a maid or what anymore. The court has decided your testimony is required in order to clarify matters in this case. Do you understand, madam? Yes, my lord. Oh. Oh no, G Mama. It's gonna be alright. It's gonna be just a okay, baby. Dutchling building a blanket fort. I want a nap man. I want a nap man. I'll hire a nap man. <laughs> How much do you charge? Well, it's a it's a dollar per Z. Something. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Van Z, we're gonna find out he's like a solid dude. Um, you will tell the court everything that took place in your household on the evening in question. Or a nap man to nap for me. It's beautiful. Rat King! Is that Rizzo? Hello! Um, and I warn you, do not attempt to hide the truth. Oh, oh dear me. Oh, is this the... Is this the... Chin up, Joni? Nothing to worry about now. Is that the... Yeah, there he is! Oh, I didn't know you were here, John! Oh, how fun. Wasn't only you in that room that day, old thing, was it? Rather think I ought to testify as well, don't you? But, but what about your knee, dear? Don't you worry about that. Hardly notice it. I'm not the sort of chap to leave a comrade to face disciplinary action alone. Oh! Tava with the raid! Oh! Oh! Oh, you were playing Slime Rancher? I love Slime Rancher. I love Slime Rancher so much. Did you have fun? Oh my gosh. Hello and welcome. Oh, John. I presume you're Mr. John Garadib. Yes, sir. Former second lieutenant of the third regiment of the fourth North Northumberland Fusiers, sir. What the heck? See my fair share of action and now live in the quiet life as it were. Quiet life. Were you not engaged in an incendiary battle with your spouse on the day in question? 
Really so far compared to my last playthrough? Yo, that's how I felt when I streamed it too. <laughs> I was just like, wow. Uh, well, yes, I am, quite. I believe, I, I, I believe this may represent a first in the proud history of the British court. Calling a juror to the witness stand is unprecedented. However, the court will hear your testimony now, juror number four, and that of your husband. You will recount clearly and concisely the events in your home at the time of the incident in question. Sir, at once. Aw, yeah, baby. All right, I think this is a good place to take a quick bathroom break. Um, once I get the music going for you all. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Oh my goodness. Okay, Star or er, uh, uh, Tama, I mean, um, go, go get it, go get, do, take your, do your post stream care, do your post stream care, baby. Um, and I will be right back. Tell me if you haven't already. What is your favorite sandwich? I'll be right back. I love you. Hello. I forgot to unmute. Turkey sandwich, yo. Turkey's my favorite, probably. Um, sweet onion chicken. Oh! How could you? All right, let's listen to this testimony. I ate a little fruit thing, and I refreshed my tea. I'm ready. Um, yes, on the day you're referring to, the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish. Can't recall the reason now. Knocked a candlestick over and set fire to the carpet. Soon had it out, though, and got the window. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. Plenty of knives around our place. Can't say I'd notice if one or two went missing, I'm afraid. If that bally thing were in the victim's back was really one of ours, you'd have a job proving it, I think. A fiery argument. <laughs> Welcome back, Lunana. Hmm. Sounds as though it was quite the battlefield in your house told that evening. Although an entirely one-sided assault, it seems. 
The enemy caught us on the hop, sir. Had no choice but to dig in and take defensive measures. This game takes place in the very, very past, Dutchling, so I don't have things like that. Lunala, I love you. To be honest, if the enemy had kept shelling us for another minute, we'd have been toast. <laughs> of course, a veteran such as myself is only too aware that on every battlefield, you're just a gnat's whisker from death at any moment. Are we still talking about a marital quarrel here? Well, I must say that I'm dubious that this testimony will shed any light on the origins of this jackknife. In combat, one's focus narrows that, uh, such that surroundings are barely noticed. These witnesses may not be able to offer anything more than they have testified already. This may be a dead end. And Zeke's may well be right. Well, whatever the chances, we only have this last cross-examination to uncover the truth, Mr. Naruhoto! Yes, I'm afraid so. Very well, Council. Begin your cross-examination. Bum 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 bow 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 bow. Um, so I would like to double check something because I think I feel like this knife had a yeah the tip is missing and that is gonna matter. I've already examined this, so I don't need to look at it again. I think. Let me let me just make sure. In case it no, oh, come on. Open the knife. Open the knife. Um. Yeah. I think I already read about this, but look here, Mr. Narhoto. Just at the tip, small piece of the blade appears to be missing. You're right. Well spotted, Mr. Sato. I wonder what could have happened to it. Yes, you you don't think it'd still be lodged in the victim, do you? Oh dear, I, I do hope not. That sounds terribly painful. Okay. All right. That's us. <laughs> uh, okay. So with that in mind, let's uh, press on. The reason is what you told us yesterday, I believe. Yes, that's right. If I remember correctly, it all started because of a note that was tucked into the pages of a book belonging to Mr. Garadep. A rather passionate note, in fact. But Mrs. Garadep found the note, discovering her husband's little secret. And she gave him a mighty number of slaps across the face for it, too. What a sordid state of affairs. Hell on earth. <laughs> I say when a chap says he can't recall such things, it's common decency not to drag it up. <laughs> and besides, half of it was wide of the mark anyway. A likely story. <laughs> These waters run very deep. And what transpired next after the multiple blows to the face? Knocked a candlestick over and set fire to the carpet. Soon had it out, though. Got the window open. Hold it. And the fire also spread some items of furniture, didn't it? Fort built. Oh, hell yeah. A bookcase, my armchair, anything of mine, really. Just so happens there was some bath water around that evening, so I sloshed that around to put it out. The most precarious situation you put yourself in. Ours is a three-story townhouse on the west side of the street, where the water main isn't connected yet. Have to draw water from a public water pump during the day if you need any, you see. The lodgers are always moaning that they can't get any water at night. Although, that little mustache Japanese man buys water in bottles, I believe. The defendant, Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, he requires his stipend. He receives a stipend for his studies, you know, from his home country. Can you imagine being able to brew a pot of tea at all hours? He's obviously very well off. Have you actually seen the state of the man? I believe he uses all of his income to buy books. Well, anyway, the point is, I was able to douse the fire with water, fortunately enough. Excuse me. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. Hold it! Even though the room was on fire? As far as I was concerned at the time. It was more important to extinguish my anger than the flames. What a woman wants to throw, she must throw. It's most certainly not a true, not true of a Sasano takedown, Mr. Naruto. How did she know I was thinking that? <laughs> so please cast your mind back and try to remember. Was a knife among the items that you threw at your husband that day? In all honesty, I don't recall. But I feel I must point out that I'm no monster. Let me see. Some bread, a cabbage, garlic, 
A towel and a sponge. Oh. Oh, hello. Hello there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hello, excuse sir, excuse me, sir. Do you have something to add, sir? Mr. Garadab. Ah, ah, don't you! Ah, sorry. I beg your pardon. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind? Nothing of any significance, no. Just that the barrage of projectiles the old thing launched in my direction was someone more solid than she implies. Books, bricks, and the fire poker, I seem to recall. Ouch. And the woman's aim is uncanny. She landed a direct hit with every valley. Oh no, not this pipe. Good grief, woman. We're not at home now. This is a court of law. Oh, dearie me. Ever so sorry, dear. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> What's she even doing with the teapot in here? Honestly, John, I would never have thrown such things at you, obviously. Well, take a look at this, then. How do you suppose that happened, hmm? Your pipe, sir. Had this thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Oh! Kelsh the Portal Master with a raid. Hello and welcome! Uh, I didn't hear the noise. Maybe it's just too loud in my ears. Welcome, welcome, Kelsh! Thank you for the raid. How is Minecraft? Hello! Um, had this thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Knocked it clean out with one of her soft projectiles she did, yes. And when I went to pick the thing up, it was broken in two. I'd like to see a sponge do that sort of damage. I see, your pipe was broken. Wait, Digimobs, Digimobs, what is that? Tell me about that. <laughs> I've never heard of that. It would never have been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Anyway, I managed to bandage the thing up for now. Oh, you are one to exaggerate, aren't you, dear? <laughs> Oh, is it is it like Pokemon, the Pokemon mod, but Digimon? Um, it could be important. That's cool. I played the Pokemon one. I made a YouTube video about it a long time ago. A long, long time ago. If you want to watch a a, a, a mediocre YouTube video. <laughs> you can watch my old YouTube content. The defense believed Mr. Garadab's remarks just now to be of great significance. Objection. This war veteran's words only tell us one thing. Betray a fiery wife and pipes as well as hearts may be broken. That's what it is. That's cool. Hell yeah. Did you have fun? Sentimental wisdom, perhaps, but hardly worthy of adding to the formal testimony. Indeed. Common sense, one might say. Might one. In that case, would you at least permit us to examine the pipe, sir? Hmm. Well, I, I don't see why not. Oh, the knife tip's gonna be in it. Oh, dear me, there you go again, trying to ingratiate yourself with a young lady. There's no wiki. Oh, no. Very well, the court will accept the gentleman's pipe as evidence. Let me look at that pipe. I didn't speak out of turn, Mr. Narahono. I was just feeling rather disappointed for you that your request was turned down. Oh, no, it's fine. Thanks to Sato-san, we have some new evidence to work with. We should just have it occur for me. Well, thank you for that rebuttal, Mr. Garadab. Let's look at it now. Uh oh. Let's look at the pipe, the pipe, baby. All right. There's a small nick out of the bowl here. Look, it appears to have been made relatively recently. You see how there are little scrapes and dents all over it? It's clear, clearly a well-loved pipe. Lyra, hello, hello. Yes, you're right. It seems to me recently that being well-loved goes hand-in-hand -hand with getting some battle scars. This particular nick is catching my eye, though. Because it's clearly new. Oh, but it's still... Come on. <laughs> just right there. Oh, something just twinkled inside the chamber of the pipe here. Yes, I saw it. Something stuck in there, I think. Let's turn it over and give it a shake. Well, what's this? A tiny fragment of metal! It looks like the tip of a blade or something. Or something. Hmm. The, tip of, the tip of a blade? Surely it couldn't be. Yeah, no, I think it could, bud. I think it definitely, definitely could. Um, alright. Oh, oops. Okay, let's get the hell out of here. Alright, we have a clue. Give me a clue, baby, 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 baby. Um. E yeah. Let's just present it. I don't think we need to go through all the... 
protection. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Bonk! Mr. Garadab, can I ask you to take a good look at this, please? You can ask, but I can't see a bally thing. You can't? You used to call me Dead Eye Deb back in the regiment, of course. That was some time ago now. Even when I'm trying to enjoy a large print book by the fire these days. I struggled to tell a B from a D and a P from a Q, to be honest. Oh, he does. Dearie me, it's rather wearing being asked about every other letter and every other word. You mustn't... You must... <laughs> this is a bad joke. You must be very d dizzy. <laughs> hey, it's the only way, Kelsh, to turn into a big streamer. You gotta start somewhere, right? Boo, 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 boo. You're doing great, baby. What is that? A tiny scrap of metal? Yes, almost certainly from the tip of a blade. And what may appear at first to be just a tiny scrap is, a f is in fact a crucial piece of evidence. Interesting. And where did the defense come by this evidence? It was lodged in the chamber of Mr. Garadeb's pipe. My pipe, you say? By Jove, I wonder how that got there. And what precisely does this fragment of metal signify, Council? Are you suggesting that it is in some way related to the member of the the matter of the stabbing on Briar Road? Boom. <laughs> I am. What? When put together with another piece of evidence already in the court record, I believe this tiny fragment of metal will unravel the whole the whole truth of this case, my lord. Well, she's so little. <laughs> His robe has a burn mark in the butt. <laughs> Hmm, you feel rather confident in your extraordinary statement, Counsel. Very well, then. Present the, pert the pertinent evidence to the court. What evidence, Parrot? It's the... No come on. Come on, baby. Oh. Present to... Take that! Take that! This is the knife that was found in the victim's back. If you look closely, you will see that there is a small piece at the tip of the blade that is missing. A common issue with the inferior blade sold at unsavory street markets. Criminals who use them regularly leave the tips lodged in the victim's bones. And what of this particular knife? No doubt its tip has suffered a similar fate, now languishing somewhere near the spine of the victim. Objection! No, that's not the case. The tip of this particular knife's blade is the very fragment of metal we discovered in the chamber of Mr. Garadeb's pipe. Ah! Ah, uh, whoa. <laughs> Good grief, Lord Van Zeeks. I don't believe it. The knife from the crime scene and this fragment of metal are a perfect match. Good, Good golly gosh! <laughs> order, order, order! Is, is this some sort of eastern sorcery? Oh, he's, he's big mad. This is no magic, my lord. This is a miracle. A miracle? Well, Van Zeeks has figured it out, has he? Council, explain this extraordinary coincidence at once. Yes, my lord. The crucial point we have to ask ourselves here is when did the fragment of metal find its way inside Mr. Garadeb's pipe? Something that was clarified for us in the most recent witness testimony. I had this thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Knocked it clean out with one of her soft projectiles she did, yes. It would never have been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. <laughs> oh, he broke the pipe. Oh, dearie. Oh, dearie me. During the argument between these two that occurred, just as the victim was on the pavement below, Mrs. Garadem flung this knife at her husband. However... The knife miss, missed Mr. Garadab, instead striking the pipe in his hand at the time. Which cause, caused the tip to break off, of course. Good lord! Yes, and that is when the tiny tip of the blade found its way inside Mr. Garadab's pipe. Wine? Hello! <laughs> Hi, off! The chances of that are one in a million! And yet there's no other credible explanation for how the tip of the blade ended up in your pipe. Then, after losing its tip, the knife ricocheted off the pipe and flew out of the open window. 
Her cheeks are very jiggly, it's true. Ah! They're like those little, uh, like the, the latte foam, you know? Um, in short, this knife, which fell from the window of the Garadeb's house, is the very same knife that struck the victim in the middle of the back of the street below. Oh gosh, oh dear, oh! No! <laughs> Objection! <laughs> He's got wine. Or blood. Spicy juice store. Oh my god. A full bodied theory, I'll give you that. Because it, it's wine, it's a wine joke, get it? The next few days off, hell yeah! A complex bouquet of seemingly trivial points, plausibly arranged to create an almost passable vintage. It's all wine jokes. You're right on time, Ob, how do you know this? Because she's little, Lunala. Allow me to toast my learned friend's characteristically Nipponese approach to bottling his argument. Sorry? But after all, it is just a theory. A game theory. The bottle, I fear, is corked. Ah! <laughs> because you see... Oh! It's spoiled by an insurmountable inconsistency. Insurmountable? What? Well, Fanzix, explain yourself. A whole leg. What is this inconsistency you claim to have identified? An inconsistency of the simplest nature, my lord. The victim was found with a knife planted in the middle of her back. Yes, in her... Ah! <laughs> That's right, you silly little man! <laughs> now, Joan, old thing, what are you getting so excited about? <laughs> he should not be allowed to, but th this is a real Wild West. Let us consider the basic facts of the case once more. The victim was walking along the pavement before being stabbed in the back and falling to the ground. If that knife that's, that if the knife that struck in her had fallen from above, <laughs> there's no possible way it could have planted itself into the victim's back. Garg! That's very true. Order, order! Quite right, you see. That's exactly right. If the knife had fallen on her from above. It would have struck her on the top of her head. Well, um. He's lost for words, look. I knew it, I never liked his theory in the first place. I don't know though, what really did happen? Hmm, it would appear the defense had made a rather spectacular blunder. If the theory has even one consistency, it cannot stand. Your theory, my learned friend. Is history. <laughs> Stop. She was picking up the book. Yeah! Oh, you're very right, Dutchling. It has to be it. We were so close, I could see the truth. I was so sure we were on the right track. But now the way it has been blocked completely just by one simple inconsistency. Or in other words. Or in other words, we simply need to eliminate that one inconsistency. And in theory, the theory will stand. Mrs. Sato. You mustn't worry, Mr. Narahodo. You were just caught off guard, that's all. And your mind went blank. But if the path you were on is indeed correct, then a way will present itself. This is the key to the court record, I'm sure. All the information you need is here. It seems you have nothing to say, my Nipponese friend. Well, your silence speaks volumes. A tacit acceptance that your theory is fatally flawed. No way, just attention. Yeah. 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 The stu your stuffies are watching. Hell yeah. Sin consistency does not mean I was on the wrong path. It means that I need to sharpen my mind and dig deeper for the truth. It's a test. Yes. If the knife fell on the victim from above, there's no way that it could have hit her in the middle of her back. Under normal circumstances, that is. <laughs> What are you implying? Counsel? There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can explain this inconsistency. And that can explain how the knife that fell from above could have pierced the victim's back. We already have the answer. Goodness! Utter, utter madness! Surely this must be the last time. Counsel, present the evidence of which you speak. Yeah, baby. Final piece in the puzzle. 
If I can successfully make sense of this, the truth will be laid bare at last. The evidence explains how the knife, falling knife became lodged in the victim's back is the fourth book. Take that! The yeah, Dutchling has to be right. This, the fourth book found at the scene, is the final piece of evidence the defense will present. Oh, the music! The burnt book. Is that not Mr. Garadev's book? Yes, and to understand its, its significance, we have to consider how it came to be at the scene in the first place. This photographic print clearly shows the book in question, and the victim holding it in her hand. But as we all now know, it was the police constable that put the book between her fingers like that. Quite so, as part of his wholesale transplanting of the crime scene to the opposite side of the road. That's true, however, as part of his testimony, Constable Beat made an extremely enlightening statement on that point. But, what made you place the book in the victim's hand? Oh, well, sir, that's because that's how I found it. When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. In other words, the victim had already picked up the book of her own volition. And clearly, that must have been before she suffered the knife wound. Well, I should say so. After being attacked with a knife, I don't imagine she'd have been doing much of anything. So the question becomes, why did the victim have that book in her hand? Bye. Bye, Jingo! What? <laughs> I think I'm beginning to see what might have happened now. Oh, dearie me. We know that the book fell from the top floor of the Gerdeb household onto the pavement below. At precisely the moment that the victim was walking past. Yes, at exactly that moment. The young woman was walking along the street in the light fog. When all of a sudden, a book fell right in front of her. The book I threw. Yes, Mrs. Garadeb, what were you think- And what do you think the woman did? What would you do if you were walking along and suddenly a book landed in front of you on the pavement? Well, I, I really can't imagine it, but I suppose she might have reached down. Oh! And picked up the book. Oh! Yes, that is exactly what the woman in fact did. She picked up the book. Oh! Oh, heavens! And when the woman reached down to pick up the fallen book, what position would her back have been in? That's right, facing the sky completely and utterly defenseless. Then, in that ex very next moment, while the woman was still bent over picking up the book, <laughs> Why was that so funny? <laughs> the next object fell from the room above, the jackknife, straight into the middle of her back. And at that same time, walking by chance directly behind Mrs. Green, Ms. Green, was the defendant, Mr. Suseki Natsume. Well, I never! It appeared right, it appeared to Mr. Natsume that the woman simply collapsed on the floor, in the dark and the fog. He didn't see the knife falling from her, uh, on, on her from above. Oh! And from the other direction, the constable and his wife saw no one but the victim and her apparent attacker. Well, there never was a real culprit to run from the scene in the first place. No, this was nothing more than a series of unlikely events that culminated in an unfortunate accident. And that is the real truth behind this case. Boo, 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 boo. Got him, got him, got him. Boo, 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 boo. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb. The very first time you showed me that knife, I, I had my suspicions. I wondered if perhaps it might have been something like that. Lemony Snicket, right, this case. <laughs> there, there, old bean. Poor Mrs. Garadab. Of course, I never meant for anything of the sort to happen, but... It was all my fault, wasn't it? I take full responsibility. I let my anger get the better of me. I threw that book. Heck yeah, Lunala sounds great. And they threw the knife as well. Ashley, Oreo, hello! You're alive! Welcome to the war the land of the living. How are you? John, dear! It's alright, I know. <laughs> oh, 
I'm I'm ever so sorry. Truly, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> oh, he's got a bum leg though. How do you do that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we did it! Land of the Blanket Fort. It's been a bit. How have you been? Lord Van Zeeks, what news of Miss Garadip? She's been taken to the infirmary. It would appear that today's events have left her in an especially flustered state. However, I believe she will recover in due course. There is no cause for concern. Yes, unbeknownst to themselves, they caused what could have easily been a terrible tragedy. They shall have to prepare themselves for the consequences of their actions. I've been doing great. I'm all updated and stuff. There is good news, my there there is good news, my lord, however. I have just had word from the hospital where the victim is being treated. Her condition is improving steadily, and the doctor believes she will regain consciousness soon. It's strange, we've been talking about the victim all this time, but we've never once met her. How wonderful! The woman is out of danger, it seems! Yes, that is good news. So, Mr. Soseki Natsume! Oh, he, I forgot, he's a weirdo. <laughs> ah, um, yes? On behalf of my fellow countrymen, I would like to take this opportunity to beg your pardon, sir. You came from your distant eastern homeland to study our great British culture. And have been repaid with immeasurable unkindness. Please accept our heartfelt apologies. No, it is me who should be begging your pardon. Oh no, Mr. Natsume. That evening, when the young woman just collapsed on the pavement before my eyes, I, I jumped to the wrong conclusion again in my confusion. What conclusion, sir? I was sure that the woman was dead. Yes, Constable Beat said the same thing, didn't he? He thought she had been killed too. I suppose she must have looked completely lifeless. It's been about a year since I arrived in Great Britain now, but I still can't get used to life here. I, I can't relax. I'm sure that there are evil spirits looking in the fog, like they're haunting me. Poor Sasaki-san, his imagination has really got the better of him. Yes, poor man. So when it happened, I thought the young woman had been taken by the fog spirits. I should never have dropped my books like that and run away. I should have gone for help for a doctor! For the police. Instead, I've managed to create a rift in the relationship of trust between our two empires. And for that, I am truly sorry. <laughs> Why, did Gar Why is Garadab in the stand now? One could indeed say that some sort of mischievous spirit has been at work here, I think. One that created a chain of unfortunate mishaps. We were befooled by the spirit and led to false conclusions. Thanks to Lord Van Zeeks and our young lawyer here from the East. That chain has now been broken and the spirit exercised. I heartily commend you both. Oh! Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Sub-Zero, hello, hello! You like the new model, thank you so much. Yes, my lord. In concluding this trial, I must ask one last time for your decisions regarding the defendant's culpability. Spirit of Lemony. <laughs> Are you ready to present your findings to the court? As the foreman of this jury, I can assure you we've reached a fair and just conclusion. I do declare the truth can be extremely cruel at times. Well, I didn't suspect the woman next to me, that's for sure. <laughs> Sitting in for the old bean while she's out of action, you know. But I know what her decision would be. Does this mean I'll finally be able to get out of here and start work? Well, it's about time. I say, I'll have a corker of a story to tell the grandchildren when I get home, won't I? Very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. I hereby demand your final decisions. Mr. Foreman. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. <laughs> Not guilty. Not guilty. Woo! Ba 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 boom. Yay! 
We did it, chat. We did it. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Suseki Natsume. I hereby pronounce you not guilty. Yeah, the fireworks, baby. <laughs> They're canonical. Bonk. And finally, Mr. Natsume. Oh, yes, yes, Lord, sir. You are now a free man once more. Have they kissed yet? No, not yet. I'm sorry, Drax. <laughs> it is my hope that you will continue to further your education in British culture. And may you never again be brought before me. Oh, oh yes, sir, of course. On my life, I swear I'll never set foot in a courtroom again. I'm transported to tears. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, councils. Charge is adjourned. Yay. We did it. We did it. Oh, locum. Wait, you, you mean me? Of course. Is there another locum here? I don't know what that word means. Is there even one? Compared to the original locum student, Mr. Narhoto Esquire, your name has become rather short, hasn't it? What's wrong with using my actual name? Just woke up from a nap? Hell yeah. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, I'm last. I'm free. I'm free. Joyful, joyous, jubilant, and jubilation. Heady, hearty, happiness. Hurrah. <laughs> oh, I am pleased. Mr. Natsume is delighted. Woo! Would it just be so hard to say that then? Locum, you did it. You saved me from the brink. Uh, well, what happened to the poor woman was no way your fault after all. I'm just glad everyone can see that now. No, 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 not that! Lovely, loyal, locum, loyal! Um, yes? <laughs> I mean, as I said before, I have just never gotten used to life here in Great Britain. Every time I look over my shoulder, I see foreigners. I see towering brick buildings. They're so dramatic, it's so much. And from high up windows, I see them looking down on me laughing. Look at that little hunchback! Oh dear, I'm sure it's all in your head, Mr. Natsume. But today you, locum lawyer, gave my gloom the boot. You stood firm behind that baronial bench before all the blabbering British. You battled to the bitter end, laying bare the baffling truth. And when I beheld the blinding fireworks among the beams of the Bailey's roof, I bellowed, stop. Behold the best barrister ever born! Well, that's very flattering. We're very pleased for you. <laughs> We're very all right. okay. All right. This has given me a wonderful anecdote to recount to my old friends back in Japan. A an anecdote? Is that what's to become of all my hard work? Ah, uh, there you are, my dear fellows. Who is it? Oh, it's Holmes. It's Sholmes. I apologize for keeping you waiting. I rose late this morning. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, what a pleasure to see you. I am here not a moment too soon. A disaster has been averted, I'm glad to say. Oh! <laughs> Hydrate, you got it. The trial shall begin presently, Mr. Narhoto, and I wish you the very best of luck. It's just finished. <laughs> what? No! Then my haste was in vain. Ah! It's... it's... it's you! <laughs> Alliteration. <gasps> Hairlock Sholmes! Oh, have we met, sir? Um, this is Mr. Natsume, the man you had arrested, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, I see. I failed to recognize you at first. Our previous encounters have taken place in the gloom, either, your, either of your bleak lodgings or that prison cell. I simply couldn't place that curious face in the light. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> this is all your fault, Herlock Sholmes. You're the reason I had to go through this terrible ordeal. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. My apologies, sir, but I assure you, I have placed you now. You're the fellow who abandoned that poor young lady and ran off, are you not? Ah! <laughs> Had she been taken to the hospital more urgently? I feel perhaps she would have regained consciousness by now. Oh! But it was unavoidable, I'm sure. But we are, we are but human, after all. Anyone who would have been shaken by such an experience. I do feel very badly about how I behaved. Well, never mind. Now then, what was that you wanted to say to me, sir? Nothing. <laughs> priceless. Oh, I am sorry, really, but... Woo! That was quite priceless. Poor Sasaki-san. 
<laughs> Still, on the bright side, you've had an extremely entertaining experience without paying a penny. And it would seem you are not even found guilty. But there is no bright side. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Natsume? Even after this, I'm... I'm still cursed by the spirits and... Now by the Reaper! Ah, Lord Van Zeeks. I haven't forgotten, you know, what facing that man in court means. Even if you're found not guilty, you're still doomed! It, it will be alright, Mr. Natsume. Hmm? If the Reaper appears uh, trying to make trouble, I will protect you! Hiya! No, why? <laughs> With a perfectly executed Tessaro takedown! <laughs> much as like I need it, much as I like being turned on my head, a bit of warning might be nice next time, Mr. Sato. With the team up with the Ginyu squad. <laughs> so, Mr. Natsume, what do you intend to do now? You mentioned something about recounting your experiences to your friends back in Japan. <laughs> yes, I, I intend to return home. Oh! Is that what he said? Yeah, my whole name. Okay. I, I skipped by it too fast. It has already been a year since I arrived here in Great Britain. Scourge, hello. I visited universities, libraries, bookshops. I've been honored with the tutelage of professors. I've learned so much about the wealth of, the, of literature here and the city it, it is shaped. And I've come to realize that it is my calling to sail home and tell my fellow countrymen about it. That's very touching, Mr. Natsume. Or, in perhaps less veiled terms, you wish to withdraw halfway around the world to escape the terror of the Reaper's curse. That's not it at all! <laughs> the more I learned of literature, the more this strange feeling claws at my insides. I feel compelled to return to my roots and attempt to pen a work of my own. Oh, I see. A work of literature by Soseki-san. Could, could be an interesting read. I guess this guy, somebody was saying that this is a real guy that existed. And what of Mr. Sato and yourself, Mr. Naruhoto? Sorry, what about us? Will you return to Japan alongside your mustachioed compatriot? Why would we? A week has not yet passed since we arrived in London. And only now does it feel like we finally found our feet. And you are accommodated in a hotel at present, are you not? That's right, but we need to find lodgings before it bankrupts us. Are we going to move in with them? Are they going to kiss at nighttime? I've calculated we can only afford another ten nights before our entire budget is exhausted. Well then, you can take my lodgings. Oh, the windowless room? Ah, oh, but what it lacks in windows. It more than makes up with the floor, a ceiling, and walls. Great. And of course, I'd be happy to leave behind the accursed evil spirit. Oh my, an evil spirit? <laughs> oh yes. It tries to suffocate you while you sleep. It's, it's, it's an infallible wake-up call. What the hell? We'll think about it if that's all right. Perhaps I can offer a more welcome alternative. Would you consider taking lodgings with me? Yeah! Really? Well, a vacancy has conveniently presented itself. Though it is up in the attic, I might add. Are you sure it isn't just a storage loft? I spoke with the landlady this very morning on the matter of price, and Iris is cleaning the room as we speak. You must come at once. I presume you have no luggage to speak of? Oh, this is simply wonderful. What an honor to be invited to take lodgings in the great detective's office's attic. I'm, I'm too overcome for words. <laughs> so suggesting we look elsewhere is out then. Then it's settled. Iris will prepare a welcome dinner this evening. And you must come too, Mr. Natsume. I insist. I, 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 I don't know what to say, but thank you, yes. Wonderful! Then I'll go and complete the paperwork for your formal release, Mr. Natsume. It shan't take long. I love a good house with walls and a roof. That's all you need sometimes. Somebody's happy. <laughs> Locum, I, I knew that you wouldn't let me down. I'm truly delighted to have met you here in London. Likewise, Mr. Natsume, it's been a privilege meeting you, too. It's a shame that we're going to have to say goodbye so soon. Well, I've come to realize that I belong in Japan. But, Locum, we will meet again one day. Yes, I'm sure. And hopefully by then, I'll be a successful lawyer. Hopefully by then, I'll be a successful author. 
Well, my dear fellow, our carriage appears to have arrived. Shall we go, Mr. Narahodo? Yes, Mr. Sholmes. I've lived, I've little doubt Mr. Natsume will be released in time for dinner this evening. Woo! And so, with Suseki san's innocence successfully established, we rode with Mr. Sholmes to what was to become our new home, 221B Baker Street. 221? I don't know how they say it. This is a fine attic indeed, and a window even? Forget about it. A window. So this is to be our new office, yes. Our office? I rather like the sound of that. Me too. A window with glass. It's two windows even. Me too. It's simply wonderful, isn't it? I hope you can see this, Kazuma. It's only a small step, but I'd like to think we're getting a little closer to your dream now. So, my dear fellows, do you like the place? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Mr. Sholmes, thank you so much. It's a delightful room, Mr. Sholmes. I simply adore it. Good, I'm pleased to hear it. Iris and I are delighted to welcome you. I, I feel like I need to find a better voice for her in the future, but... I hope everyone's hungry. It's nearly time for dinner. We'll eat as soon as Mr. Natsume arrives. I have a lot to celebrate. Iris, you must... You must let me help you! Alright then, Susie. You can be in charge of the salad. Splendid! What is a salad? What is that? I've never heard of a salad. <laughs> so, Mr. Narahodo, how does it feel? To have your own office in the capital. It's very exciting, actually. I can't help wondering what adventures await us. <laughs> Those were precisely my sentiments when I first established my office at these premises. Until I discover the dark truth about the city of London, that is. Sorry. London is a glorious place, full of wonder, opportunity, prosperity, and mirth. It's it's fit to burst with mirth, you see, but the brightest of lights. Cast the darkest of shadows. Shadows? What do you mean? Well, I believe you're well aware of the murkiness that lies behind London's facade already. So, once again, Mr. Narahodo. <laughs> Welcome to London. Oh. Oh, I see. <laughs> of course, at the time, I had no idea of the significance of those words Mr. Sholmes so casually spoke. But it wasn't long before my turn came to lift the facade and see the true depth of the murk that lay behind it. Oh! Oh! We did it! We beat the case. I wasn't sure how much longer this case would be. Hell yeah, I got an achievement and everything. Oh, baby. Save my progress, I'd love to. We'll put, we'll do it there. Yeah, baby. Ooh, yeah, baby. Uh, what now? Do we get to episode five? Okay, yeah, so there's only one more episode in this game, but then there's a whole other game. Um. And I, uh, the Hound of the Baskervilles. Oh, that's that's a famous one. I know that one. My pleasure you enjoyed the case. I'm glad. I want to... Oh, actually, hold on a sec. I want to um go back because we still got apple butter up. I want to look up this guy. Um, Seki Natsume. Yeah. Oh, he's a real guy. <laughs> oh, my God. The... Uh... <laughs> uh, wait, let's... Let me... Uh... Turn to the title screen. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna exit the game. Bye bye. To exit this game, you have to go into the options and then hit exit game. It's right here in the options for some reason. That's the only way to exit it. Um, let's play music. And then look, there he is. Natsume Soseki. Um died in 1916. That's the day after my birthday. Um Let's look at images. Oh, he's like a... He was on money? Oh, interesting. I guess he's... I guess we're too assume... Like, <laughs> we as Americans don't know who this is, but... Um... Well, look at him. There he is. 
They were calling him like a hunchback, but he doesn't look like that in real life. Good job. Thank you. That was a fun one. Maybe he comes back later. There's all these other things that I'm seeing. Um, I'm spoiling it for myself, but that's okay. That's crazy. This is crazy. They made him like crazy. <laughs> but I guess everybody in this game is a crazy version. This is like, is he is he really on like, all, like the money in Japan? I guess so. Wait, is that him too? No. Yeah, no, it is. How interesting. I had no idea. That's not him. I don't know who these people are. But that's okay. All right. All right, babies. Boop, 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 boop. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. We're going to start the new case tomorrow. Um, so that'll be at 9 a.m. West Coast American time. I have a sneaking suspicion that I think Clara is live right now. Let me see. She is. We're yeah, yeah, yeah. We raiding Clara, baby. I think we both went live at like the same time. Um, all right, babies. We're going to start off this raid. But as we do that, before we hop over, we have the link to my card in the chat. If it's a one-stop shop to all things Comfy Catboy, if you had a good time here, want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram or anything like that, um, that's the best place to do it. I think that also has like my... Uh, my P.O. Box info? It might not, though. This might be all the gift info. Um, I have a P.O. Box and a throne and a wish list and all that stuff if anybody feels like a spoiling me. But we also have um, the link to the Discord. It's a beautiful place full of lovely people. I'd love, love, love to see you there. Um, all updates on all things happen in the Discord um, for sure. Also on Twitter, usually. And then we also have the link to all of my YouTube channels. That is a card link that will... Um, link to all five of my different spots on the youtube.com forward slash whatever. Um, I have a main channel, VODs, um, an editing channel, all that good stuff. I'd love to see you there. If you are currently a subscriber, you can copy and paste this when we raid Clara. Clara's doing art of Genshin characters? I, this might be a, a, a Star Rail character. I'm not sure. It has that same vibe. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I love you all to pieces. We're going to start the the fifth and final case of this game tomorrow in about 21 and a half hours or so <laughs> 9 a.m west coast american time noon eastern um you can figure it out i love you i love you to pieces um goodbye goodbye everyone <laughs>